It's time to use lots of pins. Are you ready? <laughs> Hey Kimberbell friends, Kristen Song here. It is the perfect day to continue working on our candy corn quilt shop quilt. It is 21 mile an hour winds here today with 45 mile an hour gusts. So yeah, the perfect day to be inside, not on your bike. So today we are going to do the stitch in the ditch and the binding. So we'll start with, with the stitch in the ditch and you're going to add your backing fabric. So in the directions, it'll tell you that you want a yard and a half of the backing fabric. Mine is the cute um, houses and, and the quilt shop. And oh my gosh, this is so cute. I love this. Thank you, Oma Darlings. They sent this to me. And if you didn't order your backing fabric, uh, give Oma Darlings a call or go on their website. They can rush it to you. The backing fabric, like I said at the very beginning, is not included in your fabric kit it is a separate purchase but Oma Darlings has them in stock and ready to go out to you if you didn't already get it so today we are going to do stitch in the ditch which means that we're gonna need a lot of pins <laughs> so as you can see on my quilt I have pins I have pins on all in all of the blocks so I like to do that um, for a few reasons one is it keeps it all together because you don't want a bunch of uh, movement at all on your quilt. And so having the pins really helps with that. But it also gives you um, a very quick visual of what blocks you've done and what blocks are still to do. So that's my biggest tip is um, pin every single block. So all of them that are are together they're all pinned each block and we're going to stitch in the ditch around each block so on that the biggest question that I get asked is do I add another layer of batting I don't it's a personal choice you can definitely add another layer of batting if you have a machine that's got a big wide throat and you're strong and you like moving it all the way through great do it um, I prefer not to add another layer of batting. Mine goes on the wall. It is all my quilts are wall hangings. All these decorative quilts are wall hangings. So there isn't a purpose to having an extra layer of batting. If you're going to use your quilt at, to snuggle up against the fire and, and keep warm, at, go ahead, add another layer of batting. Um, totally preference for whatever works for you. All right, so that's the biggest thing. I don't add batting. You're welcome to use, add another layer of batting if you choose. Um, so the other thing is we're gonna use invisible thread. So there are several invisible threads on the market. Um, I like the Guterman one. There's, I like the Sulky one also, there's several. And I will add links in the video description um, of different uh, invisible threads that I've used. I, there's some that are basically fishing wire and I don't really prefer those. So um, I, I had one that was just this big spool. It came like monster spool. I haven't used any of that. I didn't realize that it was so big when I bought it. But these, these are very um, easy to use. I know this one is Guterman, I recall. Oh, this one is Sulky, sorry, Sulky. And then... Uh, this one's Guterman, so you can see from the blue tape that I've been using this one. Um, but I've used both, and they're both great in my opinion. So one thing that when you use invisible thread, um, the metallic thread, any specialty threads, you don't want to use your um, auto threader. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> my machine shop told me oh you don't want to do that and it's funny because I did it for a couple of years no problems and then with my new machine the dream machine I used it one time and it broke it stopped working and so I had to bring it to the shop and I didn't know what I did wrong and I was all scared because it was my new big expensive machine that I haven't even finished paying off and um, it wasn't working and it was an easy fix for them, but the clue that they gave me is you're not supposed to use your auto threader when you use specialty threads like this. And so you would just thread it yourself, get, get your reading glasses <laughs> and, and thread it yourself. And, and then it works fine. 
Another thing with these and the metallic thread, if you use a, um, a thread stand, I put mine behind my machine and I only use it when I use um, specialty threads. It gives it more time to unravel and to not get all um, clingy and, and um, knotted and such. So I use a thread machine, a thread um, stand behind my machine for these type of threads and that helps too. So a couple more things. Um, you want good pins. I made the mistake on my first Stitch in the Ditch quilt, I bought these really cute colored pins um, that I just thought were fun and I ended up having to throw them away. They were useless. They weren't sharp enough to get through the quilt. Um, they were really hard to work with and just a super pain. So I ended up throwing them away. Um, I think, I think these are grits. I don't remember exactly, but I will put a link in the video description. You can see they're angled. They're, they're specific for um, quilting and they're really sharp and they're really easy to use, super easy with that, that angle on there. And they come in several sizes. So I bought a bunch of these and I, like I said, I use one for every single block. And then I also have the smaller size also angled and I use those for the inner borders or the little two and a half inch um, blocks. So you want a variety, but you want good pins. Invest in some good pins. It'll make your life a little easier. And then someone asked me about needles. I use the same needle. I literally use my regular needles for quilting and embroidery and um, felt and minky and leather. I, I use them for everything. And they're, they're probably not the regular needles, I guess. I've shared a photo of them on our group site and um, there's a link on every video that has where I get them. Um, I buy them from my local shop. You can get them at your local shop. I have tried to buy them on Amazon before and I will never do that again. They arrived uh, bent and rusty and not good. So the thing with these is they are 7511 regular needles, but they're PD. So I think that's perfect, di perfect durability, if I recall. Um, they're stronger. And the way that you can tell, obviously that PD, but also when you open up the package, they are gold. So they're like titanium coated or something like that, but they're, they're just really good needles. And my machine loves them. Both machines, I've had two brother machines, um, actually three, I've had three different brother machines over the years and my machines love them and really are, can be very picky about which needles they like. And all three of mine have loved these. So there's a link in the video description of the ones that I buy and I use them for everything. So in my opinion, you don't need a specific needle for stitching in the ditch, but um, I guess it depends on your needles. I've been lucky with these, they work great. So another thing is your bobbin. So I am not one to um, change my bobbin if I don't have to. I, I, I don't know why I don't like making the bobbins. Um, it's easy on my new machine, so I shouldn't have a problem with it. But um, since our backing fabric, depending on what you're gonna use, but my backing fabric is black and with a lot of color. So I could easily use my regular white bobbins and that would be fine. And on all my previous quilts, I've done white, even on my Broomhilda, which was very purple, a purple background. I did white uh, bobbin never thought anything of it it hangs on a wall who cares so it's up to you but i think i am going to use a black bobbin for the first time just learning something new doing doing different things so um there's this bobbin case that you can get on amazon and make your bobbins and then have them so that you've got them ready for next time you can see i don't do many bobbins <laughs> So you can use your regular white one, you can do some black ones, uh, whatever works for you, um, but that's easy. So um, the thing that you want to do, like I said, you're gonna want a yard and a half of your background fabric or your backing, backing fabric. And um, I like to do about two inches, sorry, I'm moving the camera. I like to do about two inches on each of the sides 
just in case it pulls or anything, which it's really not going to because of the uh, pins, but you'll trim it up at the end. So it's not, it doesn't matter, but you don't want it too short, obviously. Um, I don't use fusible stabilizer on this. Gosh, that would be expensive, but you could certainly do that if you wanted to. Um, but I haven't found a need. I'm just um, doing stitching around each box. So or around each block. So I don't think that that's necessary, but do what works for you. Um, and then we'll do the binding and Binding is not my favorite. I'll tell you right now, binding is not my favorite. I am uh, still somewhat new to the sewing aspect and um, it's not my favorite, but I've done it on all of them now. And I'm looking around at the ones hanging on my wall and, and they've all come out fine. So I've gotten really good at mitered corners. I did my mitered corners on Broomhilda and I was super proud of them. And oh my gosh, on, um, Vintage Boardwalk. I was like jumping for joy. They, they came out so good. So I'll show you the tips and tricks that I have, but um, not an expert on, on binding by any means. A lot of people like to bind um, by hand. Not me. You will not see me doing that. I did it, I think, once on a little, what are those called? The, the Little Pillows by Camberbell. Um, the monthly little pillows. I did it on one of those won't do it again <laughs> I didn't enjoy it it really didn't look good it's just not my thing so um, if you have a specific way of doing your binding go for it do it um, but I'll show you my way and um, you do what works for you <laughs> so anyway my mine came out great on um, on vintage boardwalk so I was really happy with it and so I'll give you my little tips and tricks on that um, and that's it. So we're going to go ahead and start with our stitch in the ditch. Oh my gosh, we're so close. So we have stitch in the ditch and binding and then embellishments and we're done. And I don't know if you saw that video, uh, uh, a few days ago, I posted a video saying that I haven't had any candy <laughs> during this entire process. So from September 14th, when we started this quilt, I made a goal of not having any candy and I can't wait to have a piece of candy when I'm done with this quilt. I've already picked it out. I'm getting a, a scotch mallow from C's Candies. And so I, I'm pretty excited to be finishing up this quilt. <laughs> candy. All right. So anyway, let's get started. One other thing I forgot to say is you want to start when you're doing your stitch in the ditch, start from the middle, which I think is probably this Here Lies Empty Bobbins. So start from the middle, go around each square stitching, and then continue on and all the way out. But start from the middle and work your way out. That will help to not get the fabric moving on the back. And I use my Move It, um, what's it called? The Move It Foot, the Move It Foot. Oh my gosh, that thing is great. It, um, and I'll, I'll share a couple tips about that one as well in, in photos, but when I first put my move it on my new dream machine, it didn't work. And no matter what I did, it didn't work. And it was making me insane. And it was during COVID. And so I couldn't go to the shop and get a tutorial on it. Um, so I watched every video I could find and everything I did, it didn't work. And it turns out, in fact, I'm going to grab it. <laughs> Sorry. Turns out that there is this little piece that nobody tells you, <laughs> but on some machines, you need this piece for the move it foot to work and you just screw it in and I'll show you. It's super easy, but if you haven't used your move it foot or you're afraid of your move it foot, give it a try and see if you need this piece. If you do make sure you include it because mine would not work without it. So uh, that's it. Let's go. <laughs>
for your binding fabric, it's the black and white stripes. You need a third of a yard of the fabric and we're supposed to cut them into five, two and a quarter inch strips. I prefer two and a half. So if I have enough, I'm going to do two and a half. I haven't cut mine yet, obviously, so I don't know if I'll have enough. But if I do have enough, I personally prefer two and a half inch. Um, if you prefer it really tight um, for a nice like crisp edge, then you want two and a quarter. If you want a little bit of wiggle room, because I like to work from the back, you start with the back forward when you're when you're doing the embroidery version of um, uh, the binding. It's, some people do it by hand and I think they do it differently, but for the if you're doing it um, on the machine, then you start on the back and then you pull it forward and you can do a pretty decorative stitch on the top, which I generally do, and we'll go over more of that. But um, so for that purpose, I like it to have a little bit extra room, a little bit extra wiggle room for me, but totally your choice, um, two and a quarter versus two and a half. Either way, you need five strips um, in the width of fabric. So anyway, let's get started. <laughs> 